Monroe Street Art Friends. Welcome back to another music lesson. If this is your first time watching, my name is Miss Caitlin and I'm a flute and piano teacher here at the Monroe Street Art Center. Today is extra special because today is our very last fall class pass video where we get to learn about the piano. Now, a lot of you probably have electric keyboards at home that you can plug into a wall to hear how they sound. And I have one of those two in my apartment, which is how I teach my piano lessons every week. But I decided today it would be fun to show you about grand pianos, which are the big pianos where the lids open that get to play in halls and in concert spaces. And some people have them in their houses, but you need a lot of space for them. So we're going to look at how a p the inside of a piano works in a little video, and then you're going to get to see a video of a professional pianist playing alone on a grand piano and then in a concerto, which means that the piano is in front of an orchestra playing. So that's a lot of fun things we get to do today. So without further ado, if you look at my picture of this piano before I start the video, you can see that here we have keys and a piano has 88 keys that can be made of ivory if it's a very nice piano or it can be made of other materials that will resemble or be similar to ivory. You have the stool where you sit and then you have the rest of a piano. Now, a regular keyboard or an upright piano that's not grand doesn't have this top part. It is flat on top like a table and then it ends, but the inside works the same way. A grand piano has all these strings and hammers inside that help the piano resonate and make even more sound, which is why the lid, this part up here, is open so that the sound can come out. So this video is kind of long, so we're gonna skip around a little bit and I'm gonna explain it as he does. Do you want to, there we go. Okay, so there's our keys, and we have both white keys on the piano and the grand black piano has keys, been around which for makes over different sounds. Years now. You'll find one in just about every concert hall around the globe. Let's start today by looking around. at the lid. It's propped open to give the full sound of the piano. While no one is playing the piano, it's usually best to close the lid to avoid collecting dust. For it the best sound during that the way. performance, the lid is usually open towards the audience. This also lets the crowd see the keys that are being played. Which is really fun. I'm going to remove the music stand and the lid so we can get a good look at what's inside. Let's the see. first thing you'll notice Let's are see. strings. Lots of strings. <gasps> they are stretched the strings? along a cast iron frame which has to be very strong to support the tension. Okay. If you remember way back when we talked about our string video, a harp kind of looks like the inside of a grand piano because you have all these strings which is how they resonate. But in a piano, the strings are on the inside, which you'll see him explain how it controls the keys on the outside. Towards the right, the strings are shorter and thinner to because produce higher sound. Because they're higher, notes. when we talked about high and Towards low the sounds. Left, the strings are longer and thicker to see produce that? lower sounds. Those are the notes. low sounds on this side. The different lengths of strings is what gives the grand piano its unique shape. The vibrating of these strings is what makes the sound you hear. So look at the inside. This won't happen until a key is pressed. These are connected to all the keys. There are 88 keys on a grand piano. Talked about that. 52 Let's white keys just and 36 a black bit. keys. Most of the keys strike three strings at a time. Okay. For lower notes, they strike two strings and the lowest. Do you see these little white hammers right here? This is attached to all of the keys and underneath the keys, there is a string or a group of strings. And as you press the key down, these little hammers, which are white here, pop up and hit the key, which is, or hit the string which is allowing the sound to vibrate through the piano. So if we jump ahead here, I'll show you how that works. Let's take a look at just one of the keys. Okay. This mechanism is referred to as the piano action. <gasps> See how it's Let's break this down, down piece by piece. Pressing the key causes the lever to go up and down, just like a seesaw. A seesaw this next piece like is this. called the whippin. It's pinned in place words. at the end, which allows it to rotate. Of course, it's not actually floating. Is attached to a long bar that's helping the it go up it to rotate just like of the whipping as a motion the jack stands which means a louder noise hurts. and as they're talking about if you press the key louder the hammer strikes it harder which is what makes a louder sound so that is how our piano plays sounds which is really cool we're gonna jump in 
and look at because a piano has so many keys and can play so many notes. So the whole orchestra, when we talked about our orchestra video, had low instruments like the double bass and really high instruments like the flute and the piccolo. Now, an orchestra's notes go all the way through all the keys a piano can play. So since the piano can play all the low notes and all the high notes, it plays a lot all by itself because it has so many options of what it can do. So here is a video of, oh, that's not the one I want to start with. We're going to do this one first. And he is playing a piece only for piano. And you can see the inside of his piano with the strings. So if you watch, you can kind of see the strings bouncing on the inside here. So down on this side is the low side of the piano with the longest strings and the other side is the high side so for him to play high and low he has to move his hands all over the range of the piano and he's using all of his fingers really 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 fast whoa And sometimes he has to put them on top of each other. Okay. Now we're going to look at a piano in a concerto. So if you remember what I said a concerto was, a concerto is when you have one instrument. It can be any of the instruments we've talked about so far. So it could be the flute, it could be the violin, it could be the trumpet, it's any one of those instruments. If you have that instrument playing all by themselves, surrounded by an orchestra, so if you remember our orchestra video that had all the strings and all the winds and all the brass, they're behind it. So it's one person in front of a gigantic group of musicians. That's called a concerto. And the soloist, the musician in the front, usually has some of the most crazy and interesting parts of everyone because it's they have a lot of the primary or the melody the big interesting things of the piece and then the orchestra does other things to help support them so there are a lot of piano concertos because the piano is sometimes in the orchestra but not always there's a lot of music so we're going to start So the piano's gonna start all by itself and we're gonna jump around in this. You can listen to it a lot. So look, there we go. So you can hear how loud she's getting. Remember when we talked about the video of the piano? The harder you press, the louder the notes get. Now listen to the strings coming here in a second. Do you hear the strings? So look, there's the orchestra behind her and she's in the front. If you want to listen to this one later, this is the Rachmaninoff second piano concerto, which is down here. And look, there's our conductor in the front. So all, here's a bunch of violins. So you can hear, if you listen really hard, the piano and the strings. See, there she is. So she sits in the front. You can see how the lid of her piano is open to face the audience. And they're playing behind her. And the conductor pays a lot of attention to her to make sure that she's in the right spot because a lot of times she doesn't have music. She's playing everything by memory of what she remembers learning in the piece. And it's very pretty when everything comes together like this. I'm only going to jump ahead so that you can hear other instruments too. Okay, right now you can hear the clarinet in the back a little bit. So she still has the piano part here. Here's some strings. See, hear the clarinet.
It's very pretty. So right now there's only two instruments playing, the piano and then a clarinet back here in the orchestra. So in a concerto, oh, there's the flute players. In the orchestra, the piano or the soloist in the front plays most of the time, and then the orchestra will have different parts, so there are different combinations of instruments that play all the time. So you can see, some, right now she's only playing a couple notes at a time, but at the beginning she had a lot of notes all at once. So my friends, piano is such a cool instrument because there are so many things you can play and you can play pieces by yourself and you can play pieces with an orchestra and with smaller groups of instruments and it's really amazing because if you start piano lessons you get to start just by learning a couple keys all by yourself and then the longer that you practice it the more things you're able to play until you can have access to a grand piano and get to watch this. Thank you for getting to watch these grand piano videos with me, friends. I'm so excited that I could share that for you since I'm sure you have keyboards at your home, but it's fun to get to see a grand piano. So thank you so much for watching our fall class pass videos. And I have had such a great time teaching and learning with all of you about instruments, about high and low sounds and about different groups of musicians. So happy holidays to everyone and we will see you later.